Hi everyone, I'm Leonidas Kotimidis, senior researcher at the Barcelona Supercomputing Center and junior faculty in the Polytechnic University of Catalonia. In this presentation I'm going to talk about uh, the work we have done the last couple of years with my collaborators regarding the DO178C certification of general purpose GPU software. But why are we interested in GPUs? The reason is that modern avionics and aerospace systems require higher performance. For example, two years ago, Airbus started the first test flights for their autonomous taxi, takeoff, and landing project. Traditional processors cannot provide the required performance for such complex tasks. However, graphics processing units, also known as GPUs, can provide high performance with low power and consumption. From the programmer point of view, embedded GPUs are massively parallel multi-threaded coprocessors. This means that in order to program them, we have to write some CPU code, like for any other avionics application, which has to perform some calls to a programming API, which takes care of offloading the computation to the GPU and transfers between the CPU and the GPU because they have uh, different memory address spaces. Also, we have to write some GPU code in some GPU programming language, which in non-safety critical environments is typically CUDA or OpenCL. Highest criticality avionic software, DALA, needs to follow software design and coding standards used in the development of safety critical systems such as MISRA C, ADA Spark, or the JPL Institutional Coding Standard. Among those rules, we find uh, restricted use of pointers, no dynamic memory allocation, static verification of program properties, and uh, resilience to faults. If you're familiar with uh, GPUs, you will notice that uh, these are violated but by every CUDA or OpenCL program. Moreover, despite the aggressive marketing from companies and GPU vendors, this issue is barely addressed so far. But does this mean that we cannot use GPUs in certified environments? The answer fortunately is no. The reason is that modern aircraft use LCD screens which have replaced analog instruments in the glass cockpit. For example, an Airbus A320 has four displays. An Airbus A350 contains 6 very large displays and an Airbus A380 contains 10 large displays which are all driven by avionics grade GPUs and rely on DO178B or C certified graphics software stacks. So in order to achieve DO178C certification for general purpose GPU code, the general idea is to leverage already certified graphics based solutions and either use them directly or build higher level abstractions on top of them. Currently we have three methods, OpenGL Safety Critical 101, OpenGL Safety Critical 2 and Brookauto in Brazil. In the next slides we are going to see details for each one of them. The OpenGL Safety Critical 101 is a safety critical graphics API which is a subset of OpenGL ES1 and is certified up to DAL-A. The acceleration of general purpose computations is possible by mapping algorithms to graphics operations. There are several solutions from the early days of GPU computing which can be adapted and uh, can accelerate uh, operations like basic image processing, sorting, cryptography, linear algebra and matrix operations. Now let's see how this can be done. First we start from our application and we transfer some general purpose data in a 2D image structure which is called texture. Then we define some geometry in the form of points or triangles and uh, we apply a different transformation to each one of them in the vertex processing. During this stage we can also access the general purpose data. Next in the rasterization stage we generate some pixels and in the fragment processing we compute the color of each uh, pixel by applying a different uh, computation to each one of them. During this stage, we can also access general purpose uh, data. Next, the output is written in a frame buffer, but instead of displaying this in the screen, we can transfer this back to a texture. We can use this in a subsequent GPU operation, or we can transfer the results back to the CPU. Overall, OpenGL Safety Critical 101 offers fixed graphics functionality because there are only predefined calculations we can perform in the vertex and the fragment processing. Also, we can also access general purpose data with byte granularity, which limits flexibility 
but makes the solution easy or even trivial to certify. Relative to the other GPGPU solutions that we are going to see next, this provides uh, low GPU performance but still higher performance than embedded CPUs. The OpenGL Safety Critical 2 is another safety critical graphics API which is based on OpenGL ES2 and it's also certified up to the highest criticality. Again, GPGPU computing is possible by mapping algorithms to graphics operations. There were several solutions from the early days of GPGPU computing. However, they were not possible to be used until uh, very recently when we enabled uh, with our contributions to overcome the limitation of byte-sized data and effectively use any data type supported in C. The OpenGL Safety Critical 2 introduces two programmable graphic stages, the vertex and the fragment processing. In addition to the data conversion capabilities that we add with our contribution, this offers high flexibility and enables the implementation of almost any general purpose algorithm in a GPU. This solution offers medium to high GPGPU performance, which is higher than uh, the performance we can achieve nowadays with avionics uh, CPUs. However, not as high performance as the one that we can get with upcoming solutions. When we use OpenGL Safety Critical 2, the GPU is programmed in GLSL ES1 language which stands for the OpenGL Shading Language. This is a certification-friendly subset of C and uh, can be compiled uh, offline. Its benefits are uh, strong typing, explicit conversions, no pointers, the absence of recursion, and uh, the explicit usage qualifiers in function arguments, like uh, in-out and in-out, similar to ADA. The similarity of C means that we can uh, reuse existing tools for CPU code analysis and uh, a property that we get for free is uh, fault protection because uh, when we access memory we do so through GPU hardware texture units which protect against uh, memory violations due to out of bounds accesses. The reason for this is uh, how the GPU hardware works and depending on the configuration provided by the programmer, the values either wrap around or take uh, boundary values. However, there are some limitations. Arrays can only be read-only or write-only, and uh, they can be accessed uh, through texture memory using 2D texture functions instead of the usual array notation. This means that if we want to access one-dimensional data or higher-dimensional data, we have to implement manually uh, an address translation scheme. Also, the memory accesses are limited to the texture dimensions, and uh, each GPU call can uh, have just a single output with up to 32 bits per element, which uh, is composed by 4 byte size components. There is no support for bitwise operations, and there is no native support for scatter or atomic operations in the fragment programs but it's possible to implement them with uh, graphics workarounds, for example, with uh, address sorting or with vertex programs and uh, blending. In terms of certification, existing code analysis tools are compatible with uh, the CPU code and can be easily extended in order to cover the CPU code. Regarding uh, manual code review, this solution requires uh, high complexity due to non-obvious mapping of graphics code to general purpose algorithms, especially at the CPU side. And for this reason, good and extensive documentation of the code is required and uh, results in an increased amount of uh, code. Now let's take a look at Brucauto in Brazil. Brucauto is an open source GPU programming language for safety critical systems, which is a subset of the Bruc programming language, a predecessor to CUDA, and for this reason very similar to it. We defined Brucauto as a restricted subset of C without recursion, without go-tos, no pointers, and uh, we enforce loop uh, bounds. It works as a source-to-source -source compiler to safety critical graphics APIs and supports multiple backends from single-core and multi-core CPUs, support for vectorization, and of course support for embedded graphics. 
therefore it supports almost any parallel platform considered for safety critical systems. Here you can see on the left uh, Brook uh, code and on the right uh, CUDA and uh, you can see that it's very easy to move from one to the other. Here we can see how Brook Auto and OpenGL Safety Critical 2 compare. Brook Auto generates OpenGL Safety Critical 2 and GLSL ES1 code and builds on their DO178C certification credits. They share the same benefits, however Brook Auto has lower development and certification cost. They also share the same limitations, like uh, texture size and no support for bitwise operations, atomics and scatter, although atomics and scatter are currently under development. The advantage of Brook Auto is that uh, it reduces significantly the development effort and complexity, and uh, that uh, the generated code is uh, correct by construction. And we are going to discuss more about tool qualification next. This comes at the expense of a negligible performance overhead, as we will see next with an avionics case study. Brazil is an improvement of the Brook Auto toolchain to address tool qualification. This is possible thanks to its small code base. We have performed an academic assessment regarding its tool qualification according to the Automotive Functional Safety Standard ISO 26262, considering that uh, it can be used for the development of the highest criticality automotive software AGLD, and uh, regarding uh, the lowest uh, tool confidence level, which is number 3, similar to any other compiler. To our knowledge, based on this, it's the first qualifiable GPGPU toolchain. Although the tool qualification uh, procedure in the automotive domain is not the same as the DO330, it relies on the same concepts. We perform extensive checks on the generated code and we support full source code traceability to facilitate manual code inspection. We have evaluated Brook Auto in Brazil with a prototype GPU application provided by Airbus Defense and Space Madrid. Within the Airbus Tanya GPU project uh, we collaborate, with which we aim to achieve DO178C certification of uh, GPGPU code for the first time in Europe by ASA. The application consists of uh, both graphics and compute parts and uh, we have implemented it in OpenGL Safety Critical 2 and in Brook Auto. Both versions provide identical outputs and exceed the 60 frames per second uh, refresh rate of uh, an avionics screen. We have used a realistic industrial experimental setup provided by the project partners Core ADI, which consists of a commercial certified OpenGL Safety Critical 2 driver and an avionics grade AMD E8086 GPU. For this work, we have received uh, the Hypec Technology Transfer Award in 2019, and uh, my student received the bronze medal in the ACM Student Research Competition at the ICCAT uh, Conference 2020. Here we can see the output of the application. On the left side, we have the graphics part of the application, and uh, on the right, we have uh, the compute part which processes uh, an image acquired by a camera. Regarding the programmability and productivity, the Brook Auto in Brazil version of the application required uh, an order of magnitude less amount of code compared to OpenGL Safety Critical 2 and uh, it was developed in just uh, 2.5 uh, days without any prior knowledge of the language compared to the 2.5 uh, weeks required to develop the OpenGL Safety Critical 2 version. As I mentioned earlier, both versions of the applications achieve uh, exactly the same uh, performance. However, in order to identify what is the overhead of our solution, we decided to push it to the limits, and for this reason we have removed the synchronization to the screen. When we execute on top of the highly optimized Core AVI driver, we obtain half of the performance with uh, Brazil, However, if we execute the same versions of the program on top of the AMD driver, the difference is just uh, 8%, which means that uh, the actual overhead of our solution is quite small and it's only pronounced in extreme cases. Overall, we have seen the three different solutions that currently exist in order to have uh, certified use of uh, general purpose computations on GPUs in avionics. 
We have seen that OpenGL Safety Critical 2 and Brook Auto Brazil are the best options with almost identical features and performance. However, Brook Auto and Brazil have the additional advantage of uh, lower cost uh, for development and uh, certification. Now let's take a look at the upcoming methods. Currently, Kronos is working on the specification of Vulkan Safety Critical, which is going to be released soon. Again, the idea is the same. Either we can use it directly, or we can build higher level abstractions like libraries such as Compute Core, or high level languages such as uh, Brook Auto and Brazil. Vulkan Safety Critical is the next generation safety critical graphics API, which is a subset of Vulkan. Again, it's designed to be certified up to the highest criticality. It's a low-level API, allowing uh, full control of GPU resources and supports natively compute shaders. It is frequently used to build highly optimized and high-level abstractions, like for example, uh, Core AVI are currently using it in order to develop their OpenGL Safety Critical 101 and OpenGL Safety Critical 2 implementations. Regarding comparison with OpenGL Safety Critical 2, it has the same benefits but with additional functionality and GPU control. It removes all the limitations related to graphics and their associated complexity because uh, compute shaders are natively supported and can achieve higher performance if it's used uh, properly. However, it has some uh, trade-offs. It's a lower level uh, API which means that uh, more code needs to be written and certified. And uh, from our experience with the Avionics case study that we described earlier, our OpenGL Safety Critical 2 version required uh, three times more uh, code compared to Vulkan Safety Critical. On the GPU side, Vulkan SE uses GLSL for programming the GPU, which is a superset of GLSL ES1. This means that uh, legacy shaders written for OpenGL Safety Critical 2 can be reused and uh, GLSL compiles offline to SPIRV which is a bytecode representation for uh, GPU shaders. It has the same benefits with the prior version of GLSL with some additional features. It supports uh, memory access through regular arrays so we don't need to use uh, textures anymore but this way we give up uh, the fine-grained fault protection that was offered by the texture units. Still we get uh, some uh, memory protection from the memory management unit between axes from different partitions, but uh, if we still want to have the fine-grained protection, we have the option to use uh, textures as well. It supports bitwise operations, atomic and scatter memory axes, and uh, in addition, it offers access to on-chip local memory, fine-grained control of threads and groups, and synchronization. Regarding uh, library-based solutions, we have uh, Compute Core, which is a product of uh, Core AVI. It's a collection of GPU libraries built on top of uh, Vulkan SC, like uh, matrix operations, uh, fast Fourier transforms, and uh, image processing filters. Its benefits are that uh, the code is uh, already optimized and pre-certified. It has uh, minimal development and certification complexity and uh, can reach very high performance. On the other hand, it has uh, limited flexibility because it only provides a limited uh, number of uh, functions that can be used. So if we want some functionality that is not implemented, either we have to request it or the end users have to develop and certify the GPU code on their own. Regarding Brookout in Brazil, we are currently working on a Vulkan Safety Critical backend. This offers the same benefits with uh, Brookout in Brazil implementation on top of OpenGL Safety Critical 2. But from the application point of view, the big benefit is that uh, there are no source code changes required. The same Brookout code can generate either OpenGL Safety Critical 2 code or Vulkan SC. And in both cases, we get uh, full source code traceability for code inspection. In addition, if in the future there is a new GPU certified solution, we will not need to rewrite the GPU application, but we will only need to add a new backend to Brook Auto in Brazil. We are currently adding support for all new Vulkan 
safety critical features and we try to keep compatibility with AMD's Brook Plus implementation. Also we offer the possibility to select whether texture or regular arrays are going to be used in order to take advantage of the additional hardware protection. The main benefits of using uh, Brook Auto in Brazil is that uh, it is a high level language which is easier than an error prone uh, low level API and uh, this reduces significantly the development certification effort. In our avionics case study we required 25 times uh, less amount of code compared to the Vulkan version of the application. However, uh, the limitation is that uh, this provides lower performance than 100 Vulkan safety critical code. However, we expect that the overhead is going to be similar to the one of uh, our OpenGL safety critical 2 packet and uh, only to be noticeable under extreme conditions. Regarding the future adoption of these uh, solutions, we believe that uh, library-based uh, solutions like Compute Core will be the first ones to be adopted and the easiest ones. However, for more complex scenarios where the users will need to develop and certify their own GPU code, we think that uh, either they will use uh, Brook Auto Brazil or other high-level languages, or the most committed uh, users that uh, will invest considerably in this uh, technology, they will go directly to Vulkan Safety Critical. All the solutions are orthogonal with each other and uh, we believe that uh, people will uh, combine them depending on their needs. To conclude this presentation, we have seen uh, three different ways that we can achieve uh, avionics certification of uh, general purpose GPU uh, code nowadays. From them, OpenGL Safety Critical 2 and uh, Brook Auto Brazil offer higher flexibility and performance. With the additional advantage of Brook Auto in Brazil of uh, reduced development and certification cost. We have seen that uh, upcoming certified GPGPU solutions will rely on Vulkan Safety Critical, with uh, library based solutions like Compute Core to offer easier adoption and uh, Vulkan Safety Critical to offer higher performance. We have predicted that uh, Brook Auto in Brazil or other high level languages they will reduce uh, development certification cost and they will enable seamless migration to new methods. These solutions are orthogonal to each other and we expect users to mix and match them uh, freely based on their needs. If you are interested to know more on the topics that we covered in this presentation, you can take a look to our published conference uh, articles and uh, to our uh, related flight software 2022 presentation or you can uh, get in contact uh, with me directly thank you very much for your attention